Hi, welcome to Retro Flicks. This is your channel for movie and TV retrospectives. Today we have a real treat. We have a science fiction movie from 1984. And this movie was a movie that as somebody like myself who was going in as just as a teenager at the time, I looked at this movie and thought, this is what the year 2000 is going to be like. And uh, so I remember, I, I, I remember vividly thinking that back at the time. And this also is a movie that the, uh, the director came up with this, with the, uh, with this movie, the conception of this movie through a fever dream. So we're going to get into that here in a little bit. What is this movie? This movie is the Terminator 1984. The Terminator basically is just a real quick synopsis here. It, there, there were three main characters or Sarah Connor, who is pregnant with a, with her son who, and, and this is 1984, is her son in 2029 will save mankind. But coming from the future is a cyborg who doesn't want that to happen because he wants the, this, the cyborgs are going to take, o take over. And then there is a human who does want this to happen and wants mankind to be saved, a human soldier who comes to 1984. Both these come to 1984. The cyborg comes to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor so, that the, so her son isn't born. And the human soldier comes in 1984 to sit to protect her, so he is born and saves mankind in 2029. So that's a big, that that that's a that's a real quick it nutshell of this movie. This development, James Cameron, he did this. He he was basically in Italy. He was on location of a movie, and he got sick. And he decided um, that he was going to go to bed. And then, of course, he went to sleep and had a, one of those fever dreams, right? A real weird dream. And in the dream, he had the, there was a skeletal figure, steel. It was steel, steel skeletal figure that uh, emerged with knives in its, hand, in its hands, crawling away from an explosion. And he woke up and he was like, well, well that would be an interesting movie. And particularly in the slasher horror genre. So this is actually where this started. So he went back to the States. He had a couple friends that were basically science fiction people. And this, this conception of this movie then went from a slasher horror to more of a science fiction. So he was working on the draft, got it, got it completed. And so he had to go find somewhere, see if somebody can produce this, found a, uh, found a, uh, a uh, woman uh, named Gil Hurd. She ended up saying, yeah, I'll produce it. And Cameron actually sold her the script for a dollar if she promised to let him direct it. Yeah, I mean, at the time probably seemed like, okay, if I can direct this, I'll sell it for a dollar if I can get, if I know I can direct it. Uh, I think down the line though, in fact, he even came out down the line and said, I regret doing that now, but. That's what he did. Anyway, the, you know, it was being produced. They had to find a distributor. The distributor they ended up finding was Orion because him and Gil Hurd, they knew each other from um, working with, a, I think they were working with Orion uh, under Corman Films uh, in, the, in the past. Orion said, yeah, we'll distribute it for sure, but you're going to have to find somebody else to back it. They ended up going to uh, Hemdale Film Corporation guy named John Daly there and they and they said well you know pitch it to us and we'll see what we can do as far as financing it so so uh, Cameron brought in in fact they were having a sit down they were gonna have a sit down meeting Cameron told an actor friend of his by the name of Lance Henriksen who he would subsequently give a role to in the Terminator he he, he had him dressed up in a black jacket black leather jacket gold teeth and bruises and cuts and blood in his face and had him go to the movie or into the meeting. And then so Henriksen goes in, he kicks the door open, slams it and goes and sits down on a chair with all these movie executives around there and just looking at them. And they're, they're like that, you know, and then finally Cameron, after a certain amount of time, Cameron comes in and says, this is what we're do this is what we're looking at here. This is the Terminator. It's gonna be great. And 
and uh, John Daly and the rest of them, they they really appreciate his passion. He's like, oh, that's, that's really that's really cool to do something like that, they, you know. And so, okay, okay well, let's let, okay, we'll do this. And they gave him four million initially, uh, and ended up going to about six and a half million. So Cameron got the got the ball rolling here with this movie. It was going to be made. Now, next we have to look at cast. All right, and I'm going to look at the three major players that I talked about in the synopsis. So the, the Terminator, Kyle Reese. Okay, so the Terminator is the cyborg that's coming from the future that wants to kill Sarah Connor. Kyle Reese is the human soldier who wants to protect her. All right, so her unborn son then will will save mankind. It was Kyle Reese, and of course Sarah Connor, the uh, uh, the object here of the um, of their. Uh, the, the object of the Terminator wanting to wanting to kill her and Kyle Reese wanting to protect her and obviously her having the unborn son that's go, is supposed to uh, to uh, save mankind in the future. So the studio wanted Schwarzenegger for Kyle Reese, and Cameron was like, "No, I don't. I don't even really want him in the movie." I mean, he had a name. I mean, he wasn't in the stratosphere like after this movie will make him, but he still had a pretty good name. And Cameron thought, I'm going to have to get even somebody bigger. Uh, they actually, but you know, funny thing is, though, is for the Terminator, they did actually um, offer it to Sylvester Stallone and Mel Gibson, and they both turned it down. But um, they just, but Cameron didn't want Schwarzenegger. But the, the studio did. So they they sent them out for like a lunch or a meeting. And Cameron's like, okay, I'm going to pick a fight with him. And then I'll go back and say, he's just too difficult. Uh, he was fighting with me. He's too difficult. And now I'll give him an excuse not to use it. But it ended up being a really good meeting. And, and, and Schwarzenegger had a lot of good ideas with the Terminator character. And so Cameron came back pretty impressed by him and went back to the studio and said, Schwarzenegger, he's not going to be Kyle Reese. He's going to be the Terminator, and he'd be a heck of a Terminator. So Arnold Schwarzenegger became the Terminator. For Kyle Reese, they were looking more at somebody that actually could have a human connection and show some love because they're going to need that between him and Sarah Connor in the movie. So, But unfortunately, most of the actors, if not all of, the, all of them except for one anyway, uh, played this as more of like a more of almost like a Terminator character, like hard and you know, you know, kind of a mean type of thing, you know. And that's not what they were looking at because it didn't show that they would be able to show love. And Michael Bean was the one that did that, you know. And he wasn't a real big guy, but could protect her, but also show a human connection. And so he got the role for Sarah Connor. That would go to Linda Hamilton. They were looking for somebody, uh, looking for a woman that, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're, uh, they were looking for a woman that would walk into a party and not ever, not necessarily would everybody just swing their heads and look at her, but it would be somebody you'd want to get to know. And, and that's kind of what they were looking at with that character. And Linda Hamilton definitely fit that bill. Uh, so she got that role. Uh, you know, and interestingly enough, when Schwarzenegger got, the, going back to Schwarzenegger, when he got the role, he didn't actually think the role was going to be all that, the movie was going to be all that great. But he figured, well, it's something different than what I've played. And it's going to be low budget. If, if it doesn't do well, nobody's going to really know. It's not going to hurt my career. So just kind of interesting tidbit there. You know, so going into then the filming of this, the filming is interesting. If you watch the movie, pretty much all of it is at night. They were going to film this movie at night. So you obviously had just the night time to do this. And James Cameron wanted to do this quick. I want to do this at night. I don't want to get permits. Those take time. So this is going to, this, the filming of this was a rogue type of feeling, or filming, excuse me, a rogue type of filming. In fact, there was one thing I read where it said that Cameron called Arnold Schwarzenegger up at three o'clock in the morning in his room and said, be in costume at this place at this time. We've got to shoot and get out before the cops come. Because the cops come and you don't have a permit, things might you know, get shut down. So they need they they wanted they wanted to shoot and get out so they didn't have to, to, to get permits and do all of that. And if you watch the movie and you see extras, 
or you or you see people in the background. They're not even extras in higher extras. They're people in the background. Those are actual real people that are in the background in the in the in the, in the scenes. And if they're giving like a what's going on here type of look, that's probably because they are wondering what's going on here because this is real. They were they were, they were just went in, shot and got out. Didn't tell anybody. So if there's anybody that was around that got into that, got into the scenes, you know, they might be giving a, you know, what's going on type of look. They did get caught once. They got caught once and they told the cops that they were film students from UCLA <laughs> that were shooting and it worked and it worked. So, you know, and another interesting uh, about the, 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 the filming here, you go into the writing is the I'll be back uh, line. The I'll be back line is one of the most iconic lines in film history. In fact, I think um, I think it may have been American Film Institute that had it at that thirty seventh catch line in movie history. Um, but it's uh, it's so iconic in the lexicon of American uh, pop culture. It's still used today, and it was supposed and it was written as "I'll be back" with the contraction "I'll." That's the way it was written. That's the way Cameron wanted it. But Schwarzenegger didn't. His English still wasn't as 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 great. His commercial broken. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, a, you know, great back at that time. Um, so I was hard for him to say, plus he said, plus he said, well, a robot's not going to use a contraction. A robot's going to say, I will be back. No, it makes sense. But Cameron would not do it. He's like, I want what's written on the page. And it caused actually a strife, a strife between them. Um, but ultimately Schwarzenegger relented and, you know, the rest is history with that line. Um, I don't know if it would have been the same with I will instead of I'll. I don't know. But, I mean, certainly I, I, I'll be back is, you know, quite, quite, the, uh, quite the catchy catchphrase, you know. And Cameron went on to say, too, that just, you know, with, with Schwarzenegger's accent and kind of like the broken English and the accent, he didn't have many words in this movie. There wasn't a lot of speaking lines for him. But when he did have it, his accent actually radiated like a – like a synthesized type of voice that almost kind of sounded robotic and what a cyborg would have. So that was really, it really worked out. It really worked out with him, no doubt about it. And he said that Schwarzenegger brought this, uh, this feel and this movie set that people were just like, this is, this is going to be something. This is going to be something. They shot the, they shot the, the, the film and it was to be put out in theaters. They put it out in theaters October 26th of 1984. Now, worldwide, it, in, in U.S. and Canada, did about did about 38, 40 million. Worldwide, it ended up doing about 80 million. And a six and a half million dollar budget. Pretty good. Pretty good. But what? But what? And 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 that year came in in the box office. It came in 21st. So it just missed the top 20. But what you have to realize is is the block the, the the best times for movies the blockbuster the blockbuster seasons of the movies are summer and Christmas. You got summer and Christmas for the movies for blockbusters, and that's where most of your money is going to be made if you can get movies out in those time period. This was October twenty sixth, all right. So definitely not in a blockbuster season. So what it did actually is even more impressive seeing of when it was released. All right, when it was really short, it was still at a theaters come, I think, around Christmas. It was in for a couple months. But by the, I mean, it had already been in the, the theaters for two months by then anyway. So, and even Thanksgiving. But, you know, but when it was released there, it shows you just, you know, that it actually did really well relative to when it was released. No, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. The legacy of this, of this movie, look at the franchise. Five sequels after this. All, all of them making more than 300 million. And the only one, the last one, Dark Fate from 2019, is the only one that wasn't profitable. That one, that one I, think, I think that one you could say was a big bust, but the other ones absolutely were not. This has brought in a ton of money. The, 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 the Terminator spawning this, this movie made a ton of money. And then, of course, you know, Schwarzenegger really did go in the stratosphere after this movie and, and, and became just, just a bankable star. No doubt about it. I mean, one could, you know, one one can argue that you know he was kind of there maybe at, the, at at that time with the Conans, but you know, 
you know, like I said, he was just making destroyer with this, but I think the Terminator just really sent him over, in my in my opinion. If you've ever seen this movie, please comment down below and tell us what you think of it. Let's have a discussion about that. If you haven't seen this movie, go see it. It'd take a couple hours. I think it's playing on Hulu right now. Um, you know, if you have a Roku, do a search on there. See, it's anywhere else, but I'm pretty sure I saw it on Hulu. But it's uh, it, you know, it's out there. You know, find that and watch it, and uh, come back and comment and tell us what you think of it. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I really enjoy doing this, and I want to continue uh, continue this. Now we're just starting here, but I, I want to do this ride with you, and um, I can't do it without you. So please like and please like and subscribe. Until the next time, that's a wrap.